click is ETG. Eat the goose. Yeah, Introducing the, the two First racks a rapping. week yeah, I'm in challenge. The Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Which I need some proof. What? Just watch my videos, man. Video and then two no, racks a just week. showing all your 2500, 2500. I said, okay. Yeah, all right, that's what I can get with that. 68 I'm hours, so it was $2,075.16. Yeah, I work. Okay like 70 i don't remember like 73 74 hours i made uh like 3400 close to 3500 i made 2001 dollars 60 62 hours and i had uh 20 2400 introducing the two racks a week challenge All righty, all righty, all righty, ladies and gentlemen. Man, we are back. We are live. So y'all know what time it is. Here we have another winner of the two rags a week challenge, man. Let's go. Here we have Antonio. You know, Antonio, do a quick introduction. Let them know which platform you're driving on and what market you're driving in. Yeah, I'm driving Leaf. Uh, also, I'm driving New Jersey area. Uh, New Jersey, New Jersey. Pensacola, and Camden, all, all over Jersey. Okay, so shout out to New Jersey. Dang, it's a lot of similarities. I have to, I have to go back and do some uh, calculations and check the stats because... It's like we're getting similar markets over and over again. So shout out to the New Jersey area. I'm not sure how many people we have in New Jersey right now, but you know, obviously it's a hot market. So uh, yeah. So let them know before we get to the interview, how many hours and how much money did you make? I don't remember the hours, but uh, we leave it was around 60 something hours, I believe so. Okay, don't worry, hold on. I'm about to show them right now. Just give me one second. So he did 56 hours and 56, 56. minutes for $2,088. Yep, so you see you see his name, so it's the same person. So don't be trying to discredit and think these are made up screenshots and all this uh, stuff. It's not, it's not Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, you know, because people, you know, they want to hate instead of appreciate it, man. So congratulations, man. So how exactly- how exactly did you uh did you do it? So usually like I'm a morning person right now. So what I do is the system I use, I try to get like like the appointment, like the scheduled trips mm -hmm. to start my day. Mm -hmm. So I try to get something like where it get me really quick on track. You know, like okay. quick more quick morning. Try long distance. I prefer long distance highways. Okay. You know, I prefer highways. That would take me probably a far airport, like from South Jersey all the way to New York, probably newer airport, probably like we're talking about probably 70 to 140 miles. Damn. So, like, okay. come on. so that way I try to start my, my morning that way. All right. But if you're gonna start that way, I just go to, I go with the flow, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I think anything the app sent me to take, I take everything. I don't I don't declare no trips. I don't cancel trips because even though at the beginning when I start, I didn't like the numbers they used to show me on the trips. Mm -hmm. And I, and I kind of start like cancel them or declining them. So even though we don't have a concrete idea or information if the app punish us for declining or cancel trips, mm -hmm. I do believe, you know, everything is about computers. I do believe. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's more trips. It's going to take you to the big money yeah 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 everything absolutely is man. everything and is I, satellites and computer yep. so any small trips and the app work based on hours you, you've been online as well mm -hmm. so sometimes i start my morning with a slow morning but when i'm about to finish my day i start getting good trips you know where you can get me back on track exactly man i'm man i'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that as far as you know starting your day off early with the scheduled trips 
you know, that's a good way to kickstart your day. But I think the key, like you said, is just accepting everything and going with the flow and whatever happens, happens. So I think, you know, too many people try to spend too much time trying to, you know, really cherry picking and trying to get, you know, big trips and they end up wasting a bunch of time and end up making, you know, less money. So that was a, that was a valid point that you made. Um, I believe I, I saw, I don't believe, I know it's a fact, like you declined a small trip, right? That small trip going to take you to a big money mm-hmm. and you're going to be work, spending gas and putting mileage. Mm-hmm. So you don't want that. You want to keep it flowing. You want to keep it moving. You don't want to stop. So, so sometimes we're going to have slow days where it's been raining here for five days. So it's been kind of, some days been kind of slower than others. Mm-hmm. But you're going to keep making money. Always you're going to make money. Exactly, man. And that's, you know, that's a the proper attitude, you know, to have, man. Just staying out there, being able to accept whatever happens, happens. Some days will be better than others, but as long as you're out there, you uh, pretty much guarantee to make this money. So now, you know, we already got that out the way. You made two racks. You know, uh, you share a little bit of your strategy, how you start off with uh, some like schedule trips and just continue to stay out there. So now I know a lot of people probably want just a little bit more background information, like uh, how long you've been driving, you know, uh, you know, Lyft and what made you get into the ride share game? Yeah, I have a friend who's been doing it for five years. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been telling me about it, but I, I never believe it. Plus, I had some issue with my background check, so I was mm-hmm. waiting for that to clear. So I've been waiting for three years mm. to get all the stuff clear from my background check. So that way I sent everything to check our to the app and they got me they got me approved after okay. they check everything. So I started doing it part time. I had a job where I used to make thirty dollars an hour. Okay. I still I still work for the main uh it's kinda of like a handyman for apartment complex. Mm-hmm. So but the thing is it had me aggravated already was we had to take care of like uh on call phone like for emergencies every other week. Mm, okay. And when you, I, I didn't have freedom. Mm. So I was stuck there on my job with no freedom where, when I had that phone because you had to be around the area to go right, any right. emergency. Like any, any toilet clog, any emergency plumbing, any water leak, you got to leave your house. No matter what time it is, mm-hmm. you have to leave your house to take care of that situation or, or in the apartment complex. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You said uh, you was uh, you had to take care of your. You said your uncle. No, no, no. Uh, the, the apartment complex. You know when you have when you had the uncle phone. So when you had the emergency phone for the phone oh, calls. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you had so, to make sure. You so yeah, let's let, let's say you home right now. You working mm-hmm. for the apartment complex, and you had that phone. The phone ring as soon as you get, you get a phone call, an emergency phone call from the job. Even though you make your eight to five or your nine to five, you gotta leave your home two, three a.m. to take care I of what was what going saying. on. Yeah, okay. And then you start driving, you know, part time. Uh, to I pretty did much... it part time for two weeks. I did it part time for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I did it part time with with my other car. I have a Ford Explorer, two thousand eighteen. Mm-hmm. So then I realized, you know, for me to put the gas, I was trying to make more profit. Mm. So I got into a smaller car, three roads, SUV, three roads. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, so which I landed 2018. So many, so many people hate them, but you get the job done. Right, right. So three roads or a big SUV with three roads, I believe is the best way to go. Okay. Maybe you have more opportunities to, to get trips. You can do regular leave. You can get extra. You can do everything. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, man. You know, uh, so, but I, I know you mentioned earlier, like you had a friend that was driving for like five years. Yeah, my friend, he was you said it. You said you didn't believe it. What didn't you not believe? No, I, I did believe it because the last two years, he made 100000 the last two years in a row. Mm, okay. So the, and he was, he, he was getting, he was chasing that money to get some bridge pay off. To mm-hmm. get his safety to it, to do some some other other movement, he's gonna do. Okay. So and uh, after I start doing it part time, I see the potential on 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 this on, on this on those apps where everybody requests a leave or Uber trip. 
Mm -hmm. Anybody. Like yep. To go work, to go school, to go airport, the car, the car don't turn on in the morning. They got to make it to a job. Yep. <laughs> Everywhere. It's crazy. It's crazy how I didn't believe it was so many people requesting this service until I started doing it part time. Yep. So Absolutely. one day overnight, so what I did with my job is I took my week vacation to do it full time for a full week. Mm. So my first week doing it full time, I made 1700 before I started watching your channel. So mm -hmm. this, that, that, after that is when I got into the two rack challenge. Okay. I was feeling good with 14 and 17, but when you, when you mentioned two racks, so I, I kind of doubt it for a second. So I tried. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I, I kind of doubt it for a second. Ah, man, two racks a week, that should be possible. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of doubt it, and then I tried. So my friend told me, ah, I still make two racks, that 2300 a week, like only five, six days, putting the right amount of hours, like 10 to 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Or whenever I feel tired, just go back home and then turn the app later back on and, you know, finish my, my daily goal. Right, right. Well, well no, stop, stop right there, man. You mentioned, you know, a lot of, a lot of interesting points. And so it's a few things to unpack, you know, before I even, you know, get to the two racks, you know, first I want to, uh, you know, backtrack to, you say you had your first, well, well, I want to backtrack to once you said, uh, your friend made like a hundred thousand, you know, that particular year, once he told you that, or once you seen it, like what was going on in your head at that point? Did you question like, damn, what am I doing? Or. Yeah. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I made that money once, but I was out of my house probably like 18, 18 to 17 hours outside my house every day doing side works. Damn. So it was a lot. So when he mentioned to me, like, you know, I just turned it up and go with the flow. Mm -hmm. I just start watching your channel as well and doing some research before I jump into it full time. Because mm -hmm. when I took my week vacation, after I didn't, I don't even put my two weeks notice. I just one more, one, that Monday I woke up, packed my uniform, my, my job keys, and I'll bring it back to my job and I quit. <laughs> so they asked me, oh, we got, they told me, oh, we got more money. We got this. No, it's all our money. It's all our freedom. Yeah. Shout out to so, you, man. Shout out to you so for taking that freedom. leap of faith. So, and, and, I, and I got a lot of go. I have a lot of bills. You know, people won't believe it. Like, I have some close friends. They don't even believe it. I can't afford my bills just driving. Mm-hmm. I want neighbor here always looking outside the window. What the fuck are these guys doing now? You know what he, what's going on with him? They're yeah, going yeah. to work. You know, they don't work anymore. He eat the lottery or something. I just work the right amount of hours to make sure I can afford afford to live. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. Like I said, man, shout out to you for, you know, uh quitting your job. Uh like what was the what was the breaking point for you? Was it that seventeen hundred dollar week that you said, like, all right, I'm out of here? Or it was no, something I was Eventually, uh, I was planning to do it for so for so many years because okay. sometimes you get tired. So, I, like your your brain and yourself get tired to do the same thing over yeah, and over and over. Mm -hmm. Probably doing live, you can get tired too doing it over and over and over. So you're probably gonna try to do something else different in the future. Exactly. But I, 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 my breaking point was as soon as I got approved my background check after everything got situated. So I said, fuck, now, now is the time. So I, I, before I quit my job, I went to the dealership to get, you know, to have everything in order, the pay stops, the bank statement, you know, money uh, constantly coming into my bank account. Mm -hmm. After I got my car approved, my second car approved, I said, you know, we're not, you know what, right now is the time. And I decided to move on. Like, I decided yeah. to move on and, and doing it. Mm -hmm. I, like, I always take risks, you know, I'm from Puerto Rico and I, I take risks. When I came here to New Jersey, you know, I came to my sister's house, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't have nothing to lose. Now I have a lot to lose. I have a house, uh, you know, I have, I have mortgage. I have a couple of stuff going on in life. Yeah. So I don't want to get into details. You know, I don't want to sound like cocky. How you, how you say cocky, cocky? Yeah, cocky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't want to sound cocky. It's just the way I have a lot going on where I was kind of scared at the beginning. About the end of the day, I said, fuck it. I just got to do it. Mm. Yeah, man. Like I life said, is about, you know, you know just, taking a risk to, you know, really uh get to where you really want to be, you know. It's all about um, that. I suggest any person 
like who's planning to quit the job, just do it part time. Find out uh, I, I, before I start doing it full time. I also find out the best schedule for myself. Which one is the best hours to do it in in my area, mm -hmm. on, around my location? So, I have, so I suggest anybody to find out which one is the best time to do it in your location where you have the most demand. Where it's so, so that way you don't think, oh, it's kind of slow. It's not what everybody's saying. It's right, not what right. Ronnie told me. It's not what the Hispanic guy told me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I believe you have to study your market before you jump in full time. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Everything you uh, say, and I think that's how most people uh, start full time. You know, start off part time first, you know, testing and seeing how they market is. Then eventually they see the potential, then quit their job and, you know, transition to doing it full time. And uh, also, I think, you know, doing it part time is beneficial because it reduced the, the stress for most people because jumping, you know, doing this head, like jumping in straight right away, you know, to doing it full time. For a lot of people, it could be stressful because, you know, they don't understand a market. They don't have the disciplines. You know, they don't know what to expect. And well, they can well, get and that's one thing I, mm -hmm. uh, sorry to cut you off. That's one thing I, I got situated first, my mindset. Go with the flow, to, to learn how to go with the flow. That to, Don't let that anxiety yeah. take control from me. Those emotions don't take control from me. Right. You probably can have a bad day today. Like Thursday was a bad day for me. Like no bad day, it was a, a day, it was a good day. Like 300 something, it was a good day. But yesterday, I, I made $547. Ooh. Ooh. 10 hours. Ooh. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Yeah, you already know that was about to come. <laughs> Damn. That's mad. So yo, that was just yesterday. So I, I got, so I put the right hours in without let that, the, the anxiety or the stress take control from me. Just. Take a deep breath, just get out of the car, stretch yourself, do whatever, uh, get into the phone or something, do something, take a break before you try to turn off this app. Right. Yeah, man, that's that's valuable information. You know, just, you know, getting experience, getting your feet wet. And the more you're out there, the more you understand your market, the better you'll get at it and the more money that you will make. But, you know, prior to like you really, you know, locking in and getting your mindset right, I remember like you had mentioned, you know, you had, you had came across my channel, you seen like the two racks a week and it was hard for you to to believe. So uh, what exactly did you have to go as far as like readapting and transitioning your mindset to like, you know what, I'm gonna try this challenge and, you know, see what if I can make it. Like what, cause some I, people, they're just, they just like, man, whatever, he full of shit, I, I don't believe I it. Ju I just set my weekly goal. Mm -hmm. I set my weekly goal for, 2100. Mm -hmm. As soon as I set my weekly goal to for 2100, the app automatically put a message there. For, to make this goal, probably you're gonna have to work harder than anybody else in your area. Okay. Something like that. Something it was something similar like that. Okay. That so kind of I kind of get scared to be in and say, you know what, I'm gonna try either way. Though. I don't care what the app saying or stuff like that. I'm gonna try. And that was Monday to Saturday. I didn't work on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So that was Monday through Saturday. I didn't work on Sunday. Oh, the the, uh, the screenshots you sent me. Yeah. Oh, so you did it. Uh, like once you made a decision to do the two racks a week challenge, you hit it that that same week, or did it? How long did uh, it take no, you? No, it took me like I've been doing it six weeks in a row. That screenshots probably like two weeks before. Uh, yes, okay. this week, one week, like two, three weeks, counting this week. Yeah, it's about three weeks. Oh, so you hit two racks three weeks in a row. No, no, just one week in the world. That week. Okay, last that week. week I, last week I hit 1,700. And this week I'm, I'm about to hit 1,750. Okay, okay. 1,750. Nice. And I have a birthday. I have a, a family reunion going on. So I'm about to head there. I just work like three hours to get some, to get situated, to, to put more more money on that goal. And tomorrow in the morning, I already have a, a, schedule, a schedule. It's like, we, without the tolls, is like one ninety for the trip. Oh, uh, just one trip. Damn. Two and a half hour trip. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Dang. So that's so, so that's, by the that's end of six, tomorrow. Six, yeah. 
by the by the six o'clock in the morning, hopefully by by noon, I, I'll be hitting that goal. Yeah, nice man. Yeah, so once you uh, you know, after you fir- finally hit the two racks, like what was you thinking? <coughs> like, okay, I see what he's talking about, or or like, how did you feel in that particular moment? Because a lot of people I, I, they don't I, believe I, I, it. I, I, if uh, if I feel really good, uh, it feels amazing. Where when you can for your own, you can you can see the potential. Mm-hmm. When you see you can do it once, you're gonna go out. You wanna go out every week and try to hit two racks a week or mm-hmm. more. As soon as you do it once, I believe it's kind of like, it's addictive. Mm. It's an addiction. Like you wanna hit two racks every week. Absolutely. The way the, the way I see it is all right. I used to get like after taxes, uh, I used to get like around a thousand to eleven hundred a week after taxes. Mm-hmm. If I'm making two racks a week or after eleven hundred, I just put that money in the side. Right, right. We have to think about emergency. Your car break down, something happened to you. Mm-hmm. You you so you have you want to take some days off. Because you get sick or something, you have someone on the side where you can afford to lose some days off. Yeah, exactly. Man, see, you are you already know, like you reaping the benefits and 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 that's pretty much you know what I'm you know teaching or that's what the whole message is. Cause two racks a week, a lot of people they may look at it as if it's such a, a milestone, which for a lot of people it really is. And it's like they all ready, you know, uh take themselves out the mental game, like, oh well. You know, I don't think it's possible and they don't even try it or they just try to make all these rationalizations why they can't do it instead of just like, you know what? I'm going to set my goal. I'm going to just go out, try my best and see what I get. And I saw out of my own experience, I suggest all the drivers, keep your car clean. Mm-hmm. Keep your car smelling good. Be professional with people. You go to the airport, open your door. So open your trunk, get the luggage inside the trunk because every week, I don't make less than 150 boxing tips. Not too shabby. Okay. So that's not bad. That's not bad. This week I'm I'm around like 180 only in tips. Okay. But I keep my car clean. Always professional. Not everybody wanna talk. Everybody you know have different situations going on. Some people right. get on to, on to, into their phone. Some people don't want to talk. They're just having issues. They don't want to talk. But I suggest everybody at least try to break that ice. To get into a conversation, probably with the customer, make make him make him feel good, good and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be two hours uh, and two hours ride with somebody. You don't even ask him. Oh, you need a phone charger? Do you need anything? You need to stop in the bathroom. Let me know if you need anything, sir or ma'am. Oh, I always try to do my best to make sure that customer feel comfortable. That's man. So, those are those are those are great points. You know, customer service, man, is definitely, um, you know, part of the experience. And uh, and would you, is it safe to say, in your opinion, do you think it's more so of like keeping that, you know, positive mindset so you can provide, you know, that good customer service? Because sometimes, you know, people, they'll look at it from the aspect of, oh, well, I don't want to talk to nobody or I don't like people in my car and just have that type friend. of... I have a friend, he was telling me exactly that. I don't like to talk to people. So I told him, bro, if you don't like to talk to people, mm-hmm. if you, you know, I think I believe you're not going to do good. Yep. Because you have at least, good morning, sir, good morning, man. You didn't anything. You have, we had at least a good morning, good afternoon, have a good night, have a blessed night. Or when you live in the airport, all right, sir, have a blessed trip. Have a good, a nice trip. Something like where that customer feel like, you appreciate what you're doing or you like yeah. what you're doing. Right. You don't want to be in your car all day with a pit bull face. Yeah. <laughs> your customer, you know what I mean? Right, like, You don't right. want to be like that. that if, you, if, you, if you're if you going to be like that, I believe you in the wrong business. Yep. I, I 100% agree with that, man. And, um, yeah, that's why it's so important, you know, to you know keep a positive – my, how, how do you how do you go about you know keeping your mind positive 
and um, you know, having a good experience and providing a good experience. What like what are some of the things that you do throughout the day? Or... So uh, I believe on my experience, you can tell when people are gonna give you a hard time. Mm-hmm. You, sometimes you can tell that vibe yeah. when they when they close the door. Yeah. If you know they slam that door, yep. something going on with that. You know, you try. I try to keep it, keep everything under control. Yeah. So you know you're gonna get all a little bit of everything sometimes. Yep. So I try to keep everything professional, professional, and polite, like mm-hmm. and gentle. You know, like I keep I keep everything as smooth as possible. Mm-hmm. I keep everything as smooth as possible. If the person don't want to talk, you you already gonna notice when the person don't want to talk. You're gonna try to put a conversation together to that person, and the person gonna start listening, listening, or watching his phone. Yeah. So you, the person don't, want, don't have to tell you he don't want to talk or he don't care. Yeah, you can tell. You, have to say. Mm-hmm. you can tell. So yep. that's already a, a red flag. So I put my music a little bit high, not high, just I put my music, and that's it. <laughs> He's minding his business, I mind my business. You know, keep driving. Yeah, exactly. You know, don't take it personal because sometimes you know no, even don't take, don't take it personal. Yeah. Yeah, even Everybody's some different. passengers, they'll look at it like, oh, well, sorry, you know, I didn't talk. I'm like, you're sorry. Like, if you don't, you don't have to talk. Oh, that's all. No. After that, they, 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 even though they don't want to talk, I keep getting good reviews from them. That's me. I'm doing my job the right way. Yeah, exactly. Man. And especially when women are riding with a man, that like sometimes they get a little bit scared, probably because some, it's so many. People putting bad news or fake news or real news on social media yeah. or the news about over a lift driver doing stuff. You know, sometimes we have to create. To, we have to make sure we have to make sure that people, that person, feel comfortable. Yeah. That way you can break their eyes. All right. No, that person don't think everybody's the same. Yeah. Because I have exactly. a lot of customers. They telling me, oh, I had a bad experience with a lift driver where. I was probably like a block down, but they sometimes the apps is not accurate. Mm-hmm. So I just I call them, you know, I try to do my service the best I can. If I cannot find them, you know, just pin something where they can find me. Yeah, exactly. But, so, mm-hmm. but because they some of them they don't do they don't try to do the two hundred percent. They want to do ninety percent. Some sometimes I have ninety. They want to do like forty. Like, cause you're right. Uh, a lot of what I notice is on, when I'm driving Lyft, a lot of people they will just use like a pen. Like they'll just drop their location. Yeah. And the pen is accurate. So sometimes you may have to call them like, "Hey, uh, where exactly are you?" Cause I see you know that you put this address here, but obviously not here. And a lot of times they be like around the corner or you know certain. Or, or uh, probably next to your area. car. So many. Sometimes you in the city, so many cars passing by, they don't see you. Yeah. Yep, exactly, man. So yeah, just you know, man, be patient. A lot of people, a lot of drivers have no patience. They'll just cancel like this, you know. Just be patient and uh, you know, be compassionate. You know, just wait a little bit, and sometimes uh, even if you I, do I, wait, I, that could go that could go a long way. I suggest I suggest everybody think that is your mom or your grandma who's waiting for a service. Right. Think that just. Put in your mindset that's one of your family member or your relative mm-hmm. waiting for for somebody to get them a service. How you will feel if somebody leave them on the side of the road? Right. If somebody don't pick them up, or if somebody disrespectful to them or rude, or you have your eighty years old grandmother getting out of the hospital and the driver don't even help her to put the wheelchair on the trunk. Right. Yeah, I, so, I definitely, I definitely see that. I that, that's that how I made my tips, like customer service, always mm-hmm. customer service, the, the key for for those, for, for everything, for everything. Because it, it's, it, if you go to a restaurant and you get, probably the food is good, but the waitress doesn't give you good service, mm-hmm. you don't, you don't want to feel good. You don't want probably, you don't want to go back, you don't want to want to go back to that place. And uh, probably you won't tip that person the right way. Yeah. Absolutely. Because the service wasn't good. Absolutely. You know, I, I have a, a, you know, a question for you now since you, how long, how long you been, uh, you've been driving full time? 
Uh, three weeks full time. All right, three weeks full time. So now, since you're driving three weeks weeks full time, um, is Lyft, you know, providing you, you know, the type of lifestyle or freedom that you were looking for, like when you first got into it? Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, I can make my own. I can make my own schedule. I can drive the amount of hours I want to drive. Mm-hmm. I don't have to call nobody to tell my boss I'm calling out today. Or I don't yeah. think... So I don't have to put no dumb excuses. <laughs> um, my I have a flat tire and I have a spare tire, so I, I won't be able to make it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So whenever I feel I don't I don't want to drive or I want to go with my wife anywhere or with the kids, I just get into the car. I don't have to call nobody. And do what I have to do. Yep. Absolutely. And I believe that's the best part of this job. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, you have to put hours, you have to put hours to make to see you, your money growing. Yeah. So you have to put the amount of hours to make it happen. Yeah. But you're let gonna me, have a lot of freedom. Let me ask you this. Cause some people like they hear hours and like um, you know, they they it may be discouraging for them as far as People, they under the pressure, like, well, I don't want to work, you know, 50 plus 60, sometimes even 70 hours to try to make ends meet. Like, what would you say to them? I said, stop crying. I always say, stop crying and make it happen. I'm going to mm-hmm. use this example. If you work a nine to five, right? Mm-hmm. If you if I were working a nine to five, that's eight hours. Plus an hour lunch. If you don't get paid for your hour lunch, it's nine hours. You are outside your house. So that's a nine, nine hour be, before we, you woke up, you had to wake up probably an hour, hour and a half later, mm-hmm. earlier, to get dressed, pack your food. Probably you had to co- commute to your yep. job, probably 30, 45 minutes, probably an hour, probably a little bit more. Same thing when you come back home. So you stay out of your house more than 10, 12 hours a day. Yep. Depends how I feel. I always try to dress professional, at least decent. But if I work out late, just take a quick shower, put my clothes on, brush my teeth, get in the car, and start working. As soon as, as soon as I get probably a trip near my home or something, so I stop my house, get something to eat, yep. or get, or or you know, I change my clothes or take another shower and keep moving. But even though you see. You have to drive a lot of hours, a lot of hours, or too many hours. You still have to wake up really early before you go to your job. Yeah. And most important thing here, we don't have to answer question to nobody. Exactly. We don't have to give explanation to nobody. Yep. We can shut the app off whenever we feel like we don't want to do no more work. Right. And and I- whenever you feel you got the money to pay your bills that week, because most of the most of the people live check by check. Yep. And I, and I think the, all those are, are valid points. And I think the most important thing is, you know, just the, the happiness that you have, the joy, you know, it don't feel, it feel like, you know, once you do this, especially you figure out a way to make two racks a week, it's like the bear is lifted off your back. You know, you don't have to be like, oh man, I gotta go to work. Like, uh, like tomorrow, for instance, tomorrow will be Sunday. So on Monday, you know what time it is. Like, oh man, you know, just work, you know, Monday. You know, people, they already in a bad mood. They already defeated. And it's like, yeah, already defeated, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm having, so, I'm enjoying myself. Well, people have to remember all the bills coming, coming in your mind. Mm-hmm. So I, I, uh, the six weeks, almost seven weeks, I'm been doing it. I make already around 9,000 already. Mm. So because I, I keep I keep it I keep my goal always above the thousand. Yeah. So between 14, 15, 17, then another week, uh the two racks. Now I'm around 17. For the previous weeks, when I started doing it part-time, I was around 1100, 900, I was around the same range. Yeah. Range. So I was around the same range. Mm-hmm. So now I'm doing it full time. Why? I'm gonna feel happy with a thousand or twelve hundred when I can make seventeen or probably two thousand. Exactly, man. So the way I do it, like I know I have some 
a long bridge, right? Mm-hmm. To put it that way. That way we don't have to put on our any specific number. Right. So the first week of the month, the first two weeks of the month, I beat the road. I try to make the most money I can. That way I get everything on my way. I still have mm-hmm. money on the side. I slow down the third week. The fourth week, if I have nothing scheduled with the family, if everything's okay, we don't have no trip planned, I beat the road. Mm. So I get on the road to get that money. Yep. I get early in the road to get back home early. That way, some Sundays, whenever I work on Sundays, right, people think, oh, why am I going to work Sundays? Sundays are for, with the, for the family. It's all right. Sundays for the family. But you have to sacrifice certain stuff to give that, to give them the lifestyle you want to give them. Exactly, man. Yeah, man, man, shout out to you, man. I wish I had like a sound deck so I could do some sounds, but man, <laughs> yeah. But how did you learn this mindset? Because everything that you're doing was with purpose and with intentions. Like, were you, I, did I you learned, always I, think like this or? I learned the highway. Mm-hmm. I learned the highway. When the last 10 years I've been trying to swim with the flow. Mm-hmm. But when I was around before my, before, between my, when I was a youth, when I was in high school, through probably my late twenties or probably my early thirty, my early thirties, I used to do everything against the flow. You know, mm-hmm. no, I don't like to go in this direction. That's not the right one. I used to go to the other side. Yeah. And then when you go to a wrong direction, you learn the highway. So I learned the highway. Yeah. So then also forgiveness. You know, when you anger, when you mad. When you always hating stuff or hating people, like you have to be in peace with you before you try to do something that's different. Yeah, man. You know that that you know what that is. That is a valid point, man. You definitely have to be at peace with yourself and have some level of gratitude and happiness. And um, I think a lot of from what I've noticed after you know coaching and talking to you know certain drivers, the drivers that does well or do the best are the ones who have a positive outlook they're more joyful uh more you know growth oriented and the ones who do bad is always something that's like in the way like they think negatively they're not happy they're just angry and those who get you know the bad results <laughs> you get a bad result if you have bad energy for sure so i, yeah. I used to go through that a lot so just keep it positive, keep it a clean mindset. Sometimes I'm working and I feel like, you know, like I see somebody on the road, stop. Like, you need help, sir, you need help, man. Like, you know, and then karma always, or karma and God always gonna give you a prize after that. Yeah. I have, I, I help people because I feel like to do it. If I don't feel like to do it, I don't do it. I don't right. force stuff. But some days, I'm being kind of like, all right, I have somebody. It was a slow day. I mean, that's my own experience. That's my own personal experience. Mm-hmm. I have somebody on the road. I stopped probably half hour to change, to help the old man to change the tire. After mm-hmm. that, I, I get $150, $200 trips. Yeah, man. I know, I know exactly so, what you mean. It's like, so like you say, all right, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, good energy. Whatever you believe. You know, yeah, you know, whatever yeah. people believe, like, if you do good, life is going to be good with you. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that, and I, and I actually think that way myself. You know, that's why I try to, you know, go on my way to help people, um, give when I can, you know, to, to certain individuals if they, if they deserve it. And, you know, just show love because it would definitely come back to you. It would definitely, you know. Yeah, I we'll always keep it positive. Go energy. That's the key mm-hmm. to this good energy. If you have a problem with your wife or you don't feel like you want to talk to nobody, so don't try that, that day. Don't right. try. Just stay home. Get your life situated. Go to the gym or go to the beach or do something. Mm-hmm. Go to a restaurant. Get away. Get away from the from the regular life for a little bit. Right. What did, what did your wife say when you told her that you were going to uh, drive Lyft full time? Uh, 
she always support me everything. She know I'm crazy. She know I do stuff overnight. <laughs> so I always, always been working out. Mm-hmm. Good. So I always stuff been working out. Like when I came here to the States, you know, from Puerto Rico, I, I decided to do it overnight. Mm-hmm. When we decided to try to buy a house, I did it overnight. Mm. Or the real estate agent told me, oh, no, you got to work on your credit. I have a friend can do this, can do that for you now. The last real, real estate agent I have four year, five years ago, I told him, no, listen, if you don't run my credit now and try to get me pre-approved, I'm going to find somebody else. Right. <laughs> I did it. And I, and I got approved for a house. Oh, man. Same thing in the dealership. The guy, the guy told me, oh, you got too much shit going on your credit. Bro, you going to run my credit or no? What the hell are you going to do? You... <laughs> You here to ask me question? You here to do your job? Yeah. He said, "All right, I'm gonna try." Then thirty minutes later, he came by laughing. Man, you the luckiest man I see on the earth. <laughs> so you figured it out. So I figured out. So stuff, the the stuff keep lining up on the right situ- on the right way. So mm-hmm. when stuff get lined up on the right direction, so you gotta take advantage of it. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> So you if you live with fear, if you live with fear, I believe you you don't gonna do good with anything. Yeah, you're always gonna be working for somebody. I'm not saying I won't I won't be working for somebody else, but I don't see it in the next seven years. I don't see it. Me either. I, I, I have some shit going on, situated. I'm working on it. Some goals where mm-hmm. that's where I see the potential there, where I can get money on the side to finish my goals. Right. Shout out to you, man. So I was about to ask you that, you know, a couple more questions before we get up out of here. So, you know, a lot of people going to be wondering, okay, you're doing this, you're driving, you know, 50, 60 hours, 16, 1700, two racks, you know, what's your why? Like, how do you, you know, keep, you know, motivated? And just figure things out. Just keep going. So besides positive energy, always have in mind I have to pay bills every month. Mm-hmm. So you have when you have kids and family, it's way different when you when you single and you have nothing going on in your life. Mm-hmm. So you you have to keep grinding for them. Mm. So you know you don't want to fuck because you don't want your kids to see you failing. You right. when you fight when you fight you learn it. it's a learning experience it's nothing wrong when you when you try to do something and didn't go through mm-hmm. that's good that's good because I learned the experience mm-hmm. but you want to teach your kids you don't have like I never went to college mm-hmm. and, and I've been doing good but I have friends that went to college and they're struggling right now <laughs> with di- different situations. Yeah. Jobs, whatever is going on, they don't like the job. They don't like what they did in college. They spent six years getting a career, and when they got into the foot, they don't like what they do. They're not right. happy. Right. So when I teach my kids, do what make you happy. Do what make you. So I want to prove them. You can make money different ways with a work for somebody else. I like that. I also want to prove that it's a lot, it's a lot of money on, on the road. Even though driving lift or making your own company, your food truck, your taking taking photos or doing something like you do whatever you love, but do it with patience. Do it with love. If you're not happy doing something, don't do it. That's it. Take the chance. Take a risk. Do something else different. I agree with that. And no, and, and I think those are like valuable lessons, especially if you raising, you know, children, you know, just to be like an example and be their hero. Because like everybody talking about, you know, going to school and that's what, you know, kids are I mean not kids, that's what parents are, you know, telling their their children, but it's like it's other ways to do things differently to, you know, have a living, be happy, be uh be successful. And, um, you know, teaching this kid this type of mindset and especially if you're able to, you know, overcome adversity, they see you being willing to overcome adversity and win. You know, I think that's going to do a lot of good things for their own personal development, their mindset. But 
I want to teach them also because our our parents, our probably not. I'm not saying every parent, mm -hmm. but most of the parents, uh, we grow with parents telling us, "Oh, you have to college. You have to go to college. You have to work for somebody else. You have to find a good job. Mm -hmm. You have to work for this company." So our parents, they didn't have that many social media or apps mm -hmm. that you can make money. Right. So they were used to work a nine to five every day for 30 years. So I saw, I didn't see myself waiting to get my 64, 65 years old to get retired. Right. So that's how I see it. That's a, this is a personal experience happening in my job. That's was the trigger to quit my job. I had a coworker. We have a coworker. He'd been working for the same, we, our company, for, for the company is to work for 35 years. He only have two years left to get retired and they're trying to fire him. Damn. Because he's not productive anymore. When I see that going on, it was like kind of like like a trigger for me. Like you know what, it's gonna happen to all of us. Whenever we start getting older and we're not productive anymore for the company, they're gonna find a way to get us out before we get that money. We we want it. We we've been waiting 35, 40 years to get retired, or probably to get into the age to 64. And we make it now. It's too much shit going on. We don't even know we're gonna make it to 64, or 65 years old. Right. Yeah, man, that's so that's 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 what was triggered me to take the decision to quit my job overnight after I have I had myself situated. Like after I checked the market, got I have my other car just for driving. And that's why I had me into the point where you know what? Right now is the right moment. Yeah. So I have everything situated, everything's moving forward. So right now is the time. The reason I didn't put no two two weeks notice is because when a company gonna fire you, they don't give you two weeks to find a job. So I don't have no reason to. Thank you. So they they don't give you two weeks to find a job. <laughs> they don't think if you have family or kids, they're gonna fire right on. And before even you get fired, probably they already interview somebody for your position and you don't even notice it. Exactly, man. I I always say that. I'm like I don't see the point of a two week notice. If I'm ready to quit, I'll just quit like on spot. I'm not going to sit there and be there, give you two weeks because y'all benefit from that. Not me. I got to be there extra two weeks when I'm leaving, when I want to leave right now. But like you said, I'm if y'all want to fire me, some, 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 fire jobs me. You put, some jobs you put the two week notice and they tell you, oh, no, you got to leave now. You don't want to wait two weeks. <laughs> so what was the point to put my two weeks? Yeah, exactly. You gonna, if, if you're going to let me go now, so why are you going to put my two weeks? So that's why I, 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 I took that job. So I, I try, I did it and I won. I, I, I'm not going to say I never will be back working for somebody else, but you never know what's going to happen in the road or probably your life. Mm -hmm. But I don't see it anytime soon. Man, I, I agree that's, with that, that. I just see retirement pretty soon. That's all I see. Even though people probably don't going to believe it, probably going to do another podcast or another interview whenever that happens. <laughs> man, I, I agree with everything you just said, man. But, you know, one last thing before we get up out of here. In your opinion, why do you think this two racks a week challenge is so important? I believe for you. For me, it was like a personal goal. Mm -hmm. It was a personal goal to believe it was possible. When you believe something is possible and something get into your head, even though everybody tell you it's not possible, it's not possible, and you make it happen, so you feel really proud for yourself. Also, as soon as you do it one, you're gonna want to do it over and over and over again. Yep. And it was important for for me to prove it was possible. Not because I didn't believe, or, you know, or, or your opinion or the mm -hmm. testimony of other people. It just because I know every market is different. Yeah, yeah. I know every market is different. So I try to move around. So I, I soon figure out to make XYZ amount, amount, of, amount of money a day, daily. So, all right, it, it, it's possible. Yep. 
Because some yeah. of those days I don't even work 10 or 12 hours. Some days I work eight hours. Mm -hmm. Still clean up. And, and you... this job, we don't sweat. We don't sweat doing this. We don't do no heavy lifting. We don't have to push no boxes. I don't have to clock toilet anymore. I don't have right. to get up to because somebody, their cat disappeared on, some, on, a, on a neighbor apartment. They cannot find the cat. <laughs> and nobody is calling me to ask me why I didn't show up to work today. Right, man. All those are, you know, valuable things because it's all on you. And I think people truly want to be free. Like they want to, you know, work on their own time. You know, they don't want nobody over them telling them what to do or asking for permission. And, but, you know, most people, they don't know how to get there and they're scared to, you know, do something outside of the box or different. But man, you gotta, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta, you know, take a leap. Uh, also, people remember when you get your paycheck every week, they take money out for your paycheck. Yep. <laughs> they take money out for your paycheck. And you cannot make no deduction from that money. Whatever you earn at the end of the year, you can you cannot write it off for your taxes. Yep. Like gas, car insurance, car payment, food. cell phone, food, office tolls, space, mm -hmm. car repairs, office space. It's a lot you can write off at the end of the year for for you break even or get any uh or, or end getting money back probably for you for your pocket. Yeah. Exactly, man. It's so, man, it's so many, you know, benefits, man. That's why this, you know, challenge is so important. I mean, yeah, $2,000 is, is fantastic. Like, trust me. But, um, you know, like Antonio said, the most important thing is instilling the belief within yourself because you don't know what you're capable of until you get out there and actually test yourself. And that's the most, <clears throat> that's the most important. That's the most valuable lesson uh from the two racks a week challenge just instilling that belief and you know becoming better and you know proving to yourself that you are capable and like he said man once you hit that two racks a week shit, it's gonna be addicting like damn man, I it's, do a, it it's all an addiction again. it's an addiction you want to do it all over again <laughs> all right well before you get up out of here you know any last words to the to the existing drivers, you know, the veteran drivers or like the new drivers that's looking to, to do this. Any last words? So my advice, my personal advice and last word, keep it positive. Do your best every day. Keep your car clean. <laughs> Always keep it clean. That's how you make money. You make money with your car. Mm -hmm. Keep it clean, keep it in good shape. And don't get afraid to get into a car note. After you start, mm -hmm. you, you're going to see, after you start working, you're going to see you will be able to afford it. Yeah. Like myself, that's my personal advice. Myself, I went to a dealer. I have something with dealership warranty. Mm -hmm. A car under $20,000. Mm -hmm. Where the payment is not too, it's not bad. And the insurance is not bad. But you can run around 100,000 miles in the, on that car without having to put money from your pocket to fix it. Right. Then we take care of everything, engine, transmission, suspension. And whenever that warranty is fired, try to get an extended warranty. Save some money on the side. Mm -hmm. We'll probably extend the warranty for 30 or 50,000 miles more mm -hmm. to make sure you don't have to put money out of your pocket to fix your car. Man, that's that's excellent advice, man. You know, and I'm about to, you know, close it up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting close to approaching 70 winners. I think you're our number 65. So this is number 65. And I mean, it's not, it's possible. That means it's possible. That means it's possible. Mm -hmm. You just gotta put, you just gotta get, get out of your bed. Stop playing. So if you spend three hours playing PlayStation, so spend probably an hour. If you spend two two hours on Facebook, social media, so shut your social media down. That that don't you don't make money with PlayStation social media unless right. you're working with it. Exactly, man. So keep all the stuff taking time from your life and use that time to make money. Exactly. 
So it's it's as simple as that, man. You know, get out there, uh, eliminate distractions. You know, wake up a little bit earlier, and just you know, put the work in, man. See what you could get. You know, I always say KTM kill the Mondays. You know, get that early start. And if you have have a good Monday, trust me, you're going to definitely want to keep that momentum going. And if you, depending on when I post this video, if it's in the middle of the week and you're already behind, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it will always be another week for you to get out there, start fresh. But, um, you know, eventually you will make it if you really care, if you really disciplined and you really want the things you said that you want, you will get it. Because remember, two racks a week is only $286 a day. So choice is yours, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, you know, shout out to Antonio. Shout out to New Jersey. Not too chowy, not too chowy. Another winner of the two racks a week challenge. I will see y'all next time. Drum Don't be scared. Just get it done. Get out the bed. Get it done. You heard it, man. Get it done, man. Ronnie Speed, over and out, Mr. Two Racks a Week. See y'all next time. Holla back. Peace. Racks a week. Racks a week. Ronnie Speed. Yeah, Ronnie Speed. Speed. 60 hours.